Hello, and welcome to this section of the Differential Equations Tutor. Uh, in this section, uh, the rubber is really going to meet the road, so to speak. Uh, we're going to start getting into some solution techniques that I think by anyone's measure can get challenging. Um, but like anything else, if you break the steps down and do enough problems, then you won't struggle so much because you'll have a lot of experience and you'll know what to expect and you'll be able to do it on your test. Uh, so the method here is called non-homogeneous linear equations with constant coefficients and the method of solution is called the method of undetermined coefficients. So long, long, long title, but basically let's take stock of where we're at. The last few sections we've been doing some solution techniques. So far they've all been constant coefficient linear equations. This section's also constant coefficient linear equations, but the last few sections, the equations have been what we call homogeneous, which just means the right-hand side of the equal sign is zero. So you had some operator operating on x, operator meaning derivatives, operating on x of t, uh, and on the right-hand side was zero. What that means is those are systems that you build, but you don't actually input anything into the system, right? You just sort of watch what happens. So you might build a, uh, a spring system, or a pendulum system or something like that and you basically let it go and then you watch what happens but you're not actively pushing it on a swing you're not actively injecting current into it you're not actively doing anything to it you just sort of like build it and set it up so the response is going to be totally dependent on how you build it how stiff is your spring for instance okay so that's what we've been doing before and we had two broad classes the first one was when we did our little characteristic polynomial and we took the roots of it when we had real roots and we found that constructing the solution in those cases was super easy because basically the homogeneous uh, solution there is a, a superposition or the sum of a bunch of terms. Each one is just a constant, you know, C1, C2, C3 times an exponential, e to the something times t. The something up there in the exponent is, is the roots of your equation. If you have multiplicity, yeah, it gets a little more complicated, but basically that's it. So you literally just solve a little algebra polynomial boom you construct the solution pretty pretty easy overall even though when you first learn it it's a little bit weird all right now the second class is when you do the exact same thing there's still a constant coefficient still homogeneous um, but in those cases when you get the roots out of that polynomial you get a complex number which means you may have a real plus imaginary right so it's similar it's just that in this case when you do it the solutions you get is going to be a constant times you know e to the something t times sine of whatever, plus some constant times e to the something t times cosine, right? The numbers that you fill in the blanks come from the roots that you get from those complex conjugates that you, that you have. But ultimately, the big picture is that it was all really pretty easy overall. You identify it, right, which is half the challenge. You find the roots, and you just construct a solution. Now, it turns out that the reason that in differential equations you start learning about homogeneous systems first is because they're simpler. You're not driving them actively, so the solution process is simpler. So a long time ago when people started studying differential equations, they quickly realized this and they developed those techniques to solve those uh, homogeneous systems with constant coefficients and give us those tools. But in this section, we're going to switch gears a little bit. We're going to take it incrementally one step further. We're going to solve the same types of equations, but here they're going to be non-homogeneous, which means the right-hand side of the equal sign is not zero, which in the real world means you're doing something to the system. You've built a spring system, and it may have damping, it may have other stuff going on, different spring constants, whatever, but you don't just pull it back and let it go. You, you let it move, but you also 